Hello, FCF family. My name is Cello Lozano, and I would like to talk to you real briefly about the FCF Mentor Leadership System, which was developed by Dr. Dean Radke. This is a great opportunity for churches and ministries to rethink leadership and the functionality of ministry as a whole. Now, the purpose or the why for the leadership system is one, to provide a way to, for leaders to be developed and for the ministry to continue as you fulfill God's will. The second part is this, is to encourage people to participate in the local church or the local ministry as they use their gifts and talents to support the vision God has entrusted you. And the third thing is this, is to furnish an effective infrastructure for building your ministry as you expand the kingdom of God. Now, when we look at these uh, this why and what this looks like for us in the system, it's broke down into four different pillars. Now, these four pillars of the leadership system are these. The first one is positioning. Now, positioning refers to the leader and his or her team. In other words, the, the key leader, the senior pastor, the senior leader of the ministry and how they connect and their core, their core people that help them serve and move the ministry forward. So these are people that you are, are directly in contact with day to day in ministry. The second pillar is called process. Now, process is the process and procedures of ensuring that the work God has entrusted you and commissioned you to do actually gets done. And so this, this process or this pillar is the part that helps keep things moving forward week to week, month to month, and year to year. Now, planning, planning is the third pillar. And planning is what takes place to keep the church moving forward. Much like process, process is what that actual functionality, but planning is the part where you actually begin to move forward and think in, in terms of attacking your future instead of waiting the, the future to come to you. And so the fourth uh, pillar is this, is performance. So performance pillar um, is, the is the necessity of evaluation and improvement and innovation. So when you think about necessity of evaluation and improvement, this is how we, you, you go back to each of these other pillars at the process and you see what's working, what's not working, and you reevaluate and you begin to innovate and be, develop systems and um, plans that will help you move the ministry forward effectively and creatively. Now, in every system, there are moving parts, purposes, and functions. Now, we believe it's important in having a trusted and valued system in place that can and will perpetuate growth both in the leader and the leaders of the ministry. Now, it's important to capture the necessary components of each pillar. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spend some time talking about each pillar. Now, the first pillar that I would like to touch on is positioning. Now, positioning, as I mentioned before, is the leader must not work alone. In other words, identifying your position as a leader. Now, a lot of times what we don't realize is that we silo ourselves as leaders and we end up doing most of the work most of the time by ourselves. And this is not good. We should always have a team working with us and for us. Now, and when, you, when you're thinking about this, the leader needs to know and adhere to the leader's job description. The leader can build a great ministry and have a quality of life. Uh, Dr. Dean Radke says that this should not be an oxymoron. And so um, with that, de defining and de looking at what a de job description looks like, for myself, personally, what I decided or what I discovered with my team uh, and with my wife was that my job description has to do with pastoring, it has to do with leading and speaking and sharing on Sundays. Anything outside of those three areas, we have found that other people can do. And so that's identifying your job description. Okay, another thing is, is the leader has to assemble a team of core uh, and key leaders that work with them hand in hand. So as I mentioned before, I didn't come up with the job description myself. I had other team leaders, my key, key leaders, uh, core leaders help develop that d job description, okay? And so when you, when, you, when you discover what that is for yourself, that means that you need to adhere to that and do not step outside those areas because this will begin to slow the momentum that you're creating. Now, teams are the primary and fundamental building unit in any effective church or ministry. Now, what that means is that when you put a core team together, these are the things that you're going to develop in them and instill in them so that they'll be able to continue to do that down the road. So they'll, they'll, each team leader, each one of your key team leaders will have their own team. 
Now, the core competencies of a team member are, is, is you want to make sure that you have some things that you can depend on. You know, you want them to be reliable. You want them to be respectful. You want to be trustworthy. You know, so these are some competencies that you're looking for, and you, want, they, you need them to be uh, dependable, creative, and innovative in their thinking. And so in the proper positioning of the leader, it allows others to be developed as leaders, which we call generalist. And a generalist is someone who can lead anyone in any position in any department. Now, what that means is that you should be able to take a generalist and place them over a project, over a department or an area, and allow them to lead without having to be an expert in that area. Now, the, the next um, pillar that I want to talk about is process. Now, process, if you're going to be successful, you have to work with teams. No one should do ministry alone. Now, this is a part that really uh, a lot of times can be troublesome or have a struggle with is because a lot of times we have a thought process in leadership where we say they do. But when the process uh, of having a successful team, you have to work with the team. That means everyone is working together. Everyone's bringing something to the table. Now, the way this works is that you have to have total involvement process and the entire team is focused on the team accomplishing whatever the goal or task is. Now, in, uh, its essence is to equip and empower others to lead, identify problems, develop ideas, and create plans. Now, what this means is that when you have a team, when you have your key leaders in a team, you begin to identify the problems or the situations that you see, that you personally as a senior leader see, and then you bring that to the table and you ask for their input to help you solve the problem and make a plan so that you can move the ministry forward. Now the leader should be capitalizing on teachable moments in the team setting or team meetings. Um, they should be teaching, training, coaching, mentoring, and modeling how to facilitate an effective team meeting so that they, in, they themselves will be able to um, have effective meetings with their teams. Now I will note this, the leadership system invest a considerable amount of time in equipping you in order to you to capitalize on this important facet of developing leaders. Now, one, um, I just want to share with you kind of an idea of what I had to um, work through in a process. So we had an event in uh, October one year and it was coming up for the Harvest Festival. So we were doing Harvest Festival events, but we noticed a few things that began to trouble us. What we noticed is that we were not being effective in that particular outreach or that community event. And so in order for us to address the issue of not being uh, effective, we had to see why we were not being effective. And so we sat down with our team leaders, our, our, our strategic team, our core leaders, and we asked the question, why are we not seeing a return? Why are people not coming back after the event? One, and two is, why are we seeing more believers or other church families uh, coming to the event and we're not really reaching the lost or re reaching those individuals that are not familiar with the church? And what we discovered is that we were being ineffective because we were doing the same thing that we've always done uh, in the past. And so what we did is our team got together, we began to question, we began, we got a dry erase board, and we began to literally list everything that um, we would never do. So someone asked a question, he's like, what would we never do on a Sunday morning for a harvest festival? And we began to just write all these things on a Sunday morning service. And so what came, what came out of that was that um, the team decided that Pastor Cello, myself, would not uh, not have a service on the on the, the last Sunday of October, and so uh, um, that meant um, we would not have a worship service. We would not have uh, offering giving. We will not have announcements. We would not have water baptisms. We would not have prayer line. We would not have a worship. I would not serve message. So these things probably would never happen on on an outreach or a Sunday morning event, and so or Sunday morning service, and so. We challenged that as the team challenged me as a pastor and as a team, what if we did an outreach on Sunday morning instead of doing a traditional church service? And so the team um, basically came to the agreement. Everyone, I was in agreement uh, and a little submission there, if you will, to the team. And we all agreed that this would be something that would be different, something that may be effective, and we would be willing to risk and try. And so that, that following um, October, we did our first Harvest Festival um, on a Sunday morning from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the afternoon. And we had a tremendous amount of people come that were not connected to a local church, were not 
not uh, involved in a relationship with Jesus, not re in, involved in a relationship in ministry or connected to a church in any way. And so we were able to be more effective by doing our harvest festival on a Sunday morning from 9 to 1 p.m., 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. than we had traditionally uh, been doing it on a Saturday or on a different time other than the service. And so I think it's important that you understand that it's an, it, it, the importance of um, cultivating real relationships with, which leads to both leadership and life discipleship moments where leaders can grow and develop. So during, during this, this time of meeting, I was able to, to share with them my thoughts, my convictions, what I felt God was calling us to do. And at the same time, they had uh, enough relationship connectivity with myself and the other team leaders that we were able to um, expose themselves and share their thoughts and feelings and what they had experienced before in the, um, harvest festival type of events. Now the process um, can make it easier for the team to contribute when they say what they think, what they say, what they feel, and, and what they know. So given that platform and that opportunity in that meeting for them to have the opportunity to share what they thought, felt about the event, about the issue that we were trying to solve, the problem that we were trying to solve, it created a, a, a culture of openness and direct communication without being judged or ridiculed for the thoughts and plans um, that may be coming forth. Okay, and so um, I just wanted to share that with you, just kind of give you an idea of what that kind of looks like in the process. So then um, the next pillar is planning. Now, when we did that event in October, there was the planning process. And so um, now the leader takes time for strategic planning. Um, and this is basically what, what um, Dean Rackey refers to as an all-out attack on the future. So we had a date, we had a time, but we had to plan strategically what was going to actually take place during this outreach so that we could be most effective. Now, when, when you think about what that looks like, um, the leader has to identify what the issues are. It has to identify what has God commissioned you to do? What, are, what do we need to be doing? What is it that we, we were called to do in this season, in this time of ministry and life? And so there's, a, there's what they call, um, Dean Rackery calls the mountaintop, uh, right? So um, the leader goes to the mountaintop and this is a process that allows uh, the leader, uh, the lead minister, to um, get the most of, out of his time with God. So this is the opportunity where, where you go and you spend time with God, um, you know, intentionally looking for what the next plan or the next opportunity is that God has for you. And so in, when receiving the direction, it's key, um, or it's the key responsibility for the leader then um, to get that information and give direction to the ministry. So that's exactly what took place with the Harvest Festival. I realized in spending some time with God that we were, we were not being as effective in our outreach as, I, as we thought that we were. And so in talking, talking with God and having that conversation, bringing it to the team, it says, these are some things that we, are, um, we need to look at and be more effective. So effective communication um, of the direction of the ministry is absolutely vital. After envisioning uh, that time with God, and the, you as the leader should be able to share a picture of the ministry for the next year, the next event, or the next few years, right? So what took place, we were having this ministry meeting or the strategic meeting about October's event. We were having that um, right around the end of mid end of July. So there's still a lot of time there to communicate what we wanted that to look like. And so as we began, to share and communicate, we were able to look and see how we could be more effective just by me spending some time with God and, and realizing that we were not being effective in this particular area. Now, the, the next um, pillar I want to talk about is performance. Now, performance pillar um, speaks really to the skill sets and the art forms by which the leader leads. A performance culture is developed and maintained by progressively tracking um, that which is planned, executed, and consistently evaluated. Now, this uh, performance culture actually helps um, in discipling and holding people accountable to become better leaders, more effective leaders. Now, I want to just note that a, um, a performance culture does not negate or replace the relationships that are, uh, have been instilled and grown and developed and nurtured. Um, it actually is a, there to enhance and to and cultivate those relationships. And so the leader's responsibility to God is to do everything that we can as a leader 
and to do whatever it takes to ensure that every individual is entrusted to every individual that's entrusted to us reaches their full potential and their personal destiny in which God called them to do as well. Now, leaders are facilitators. Um, leaders lead by skill, skillfully facilitating meetings and discipleship in conversation, um, making it easy for their their team to learn, develop, and contribute, uh, and to achieve all that God has planned uh, for them and for the ministry and the overall goal and vision that God has entrusted you to. So in summary, God has entrusted you with a vision. He's also entrusted you with the ability to build and expand his kingdom and fulfill the vision with the people that he's provided you with. Now, this leadership system provides a framework of teams to be able to work and communicate and develop and grow with one another. And as you do this, you create leaders that are effectively commissioned to do God's work and perpetuate the ministry as it continues to move forward. Now, no one should do ministry alone. A lot of times we find ourselves siloed because we're unable to effectively commission God's work to those that are following and leading with us. Now, you can have an effective growing ministry and, a, and, a, and be effective in ministry and still have a quality of life outside of ministry. This should not be an oxymoron, as Dr. Ring, Dean Radke says. Now, my hope and our hope at FCF is this, is that you will take full advantage of this leadership system as well as the resources provided through FCF and our, at our website and your membership. Listen, as a personal um, implementation, I, I personally impl implemented um, this leadership system within our church here at Riverside community church and i want to just encourage you and let you know that it is effective and it will grow you and develop you as a leader personally thank you so much for your time and we'll look forward to seeing you later